Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for dropping by. Now, if you own a reflecting type of telescope uh, like this, then you most probably will have heard or own one of these things. Now, this is a laser collimator uh, and it aids us into collimating uh, our Newtonian uh, reflectors. Uh, but the problem is with these folks is uh, they need collimating as well. And uh, the sad truth is uh, usually these from the shop, uh, you know, even new, they're usually not very well collimated. Now, obviously, if the collimator's not collimated, this leads to all kinds of problems. And uh, again, the sad truth is, if you've bought one of these uh, type of collimators and you've been collimating your telescope with it and you've never, ever checked the collimation on the collimator, then unfortunately, your telescope's going to be well out of, uh, of collimation if the laser is. But if you look on the bright side of this, once this is collimated, and uh, assuming that you know how to use one of these things, the next time you do collimate your telescope, you know it's going to be spot on. So this means you've probably not actually seen the best uh, of what you cap uh, that you. Uh, the best of your capabilities of the telescope yet um, because it's so important to have at least decent collimation in a Newtonian reflector and uh, if this is out and some of them can be way out it means that you've been way out all this time thinking you're in collimation when actual fact you're nowhere near. There are a few items that you are going to need uh, to uh, get one of these things right and one of them being and uh, probably the most important uh, uh, thing you are going to need is some kind of holding device uh, something that's going to hold the uh, collimator in a nice sturdy place uh, without it being there's going to be no play in it at all and uh, the most primitive form or a, a jig or holder that you can make yourselves is something as primitive as this this is just simply a block of wood with uh, four nails just nailed into it in like a V shape. And as you can see, the collimator then just fits into there, just rests into there. And it's important uh, that it doesn't matter about up and down movement because you're gonna be pressing down on it as you move it. But it's important there's no uh, left and right, side to side movement, if you like. Uh, the other thing that's important is that you can turn it. Uh, this is uh, all part of checking the collimator and also um, how we actually adjust the laser uh, when the time comes. So you can see something as primitive as that works well. Here's another idea of a uh, jig or holder for your, uh, for your collimator. Uh, this is one I've made um, and as you can see it's just a um, retaining ring or sorry, a centering ring at the front, and then like a half uh, retaining ring at the back. And as you can see, that holds that as solid as a rock. There's no movement in there at all. Uh, and I can still also rotate the collimator uh, for um, seeing how how far out it is. And uh, also, like I say, we're going to we need to be able to rotate the collimator to also collimate it. <laughs> a lot of collimations in that sentence. But whatever you use for this kind of holder, I do advise or recommend that you do um, spend a bit of time on it and make something substantial uh, because there's no point in this being rickety in any way of shape or form. You Like I say, you don't want no movement in it because you're just wasting your time. Um, this then can be clamped to a bench. I just clamp this down to a workbench um, and then that has to be solid. This thing cannot move once you've got it in position. So uh, like I say, go, you know, spend some, spend some time on it. Uh, you can do the fork to nail method. Another uh, one, an easy one, just to give you an idea, is the um, shelving brackets. A lot of people make uh, little collimators out of shelving brackets, just stick them there, and they kind of work similar to the nail, uh, nail in wood method. Now, I just want to quickly talk about the collimator itself and how you actually adjust the laser. Now, if you look closely at your, uh, your collimator, um, you'll notice that there's three holes um, around the uh, top of the collimator. Uh, if you can only see two, 
that's because usually there's like a uh, foil sticker and the other one's usually hidden under that foil sticker. Uh, that'll just peel off dead easy. You can save that. I mean, I take mine off and lost it years ago, so I don't know where mine's gone. Uh, but you'll find the other hole is uh, under that sticker. The other thing that you may notice is that you've got the three holes, but they seem to be filled up with some kind of gunk. Um, this is something that they do in the factory. I wish they'd stop doing this. Um, it's like a glue that they put in, they collimate it, and then they drop like a glue in, in the top. And I think uh, they've got it in their head that that, for some reason, holds collimation. It doesn't. It's just annoying. Uh, so you will have to pick that glue out. You can use a little exacto knife, toothpick, anything. It will come out. Um, and once you've actually uh, got that glue out and that gunk out, you'll see that it exposes little Allen head screws. And uh, usually it's a little two millimeter Allen uh, 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 Allen key that you're going to need as well. Um, sometimes, I'm sure some collimators do provide an Allen key with it, uh, but not always. So you may have to buy a separate Allen key. I believe they're usually two millimeter anyway. The only other requirements you need is a piece of paper, just a piece of printing paper like this, and a pen. Um, and um, a bit of tape or blue tack or something because we're going to stick this piece of paper to the wall and uh, if you've got all that we're all ready now finally to uh, collimate our collimator now just before we actually do any adjusting just to get your head around how these lasers work um, if you think of them like a finder scope on a telescope you know with the three adjusting screws um, that's basically what's happening in uh, in these collimators the three screws it's like a push me pull me affair going off uh, that an altering you know loosening one and tightening the other um, is how we adjust these lasers so as you can see we're all set up now so the next step is um is to just switch laser on now you don't need it on the brightest setting uh two or three uh something like that is plenty bright enough and the next thing if i can just uh, find my glasses because i'll need them can't see without them these days is to get your pen Make, make sure this is sturdy and like I say and doesn't move it's so important that and just mark where the dot is now what this is going to do is going to give us a baseline it's going to show you how far your uh, laser is out of collimation and where we need to go to collimate it now uh, if you just look at mine I should have mentioned this before if you look at my collimator I've got the target pointing up uh, I don't know if I've mentioned that but it's uh, and this will just Give you an idea of where you're going um, in your head when we do the next step. Now the next step is to give your laser collimator one quarter turn and you'll be able to tell which is a quarter because of uh, your target being faced up. So we do it one quarter turn like that and we remark where the dot is. Now I know that my collimator isn't too far out of collimation um and to be honest folks i didn't want i would debate you whether to knock it out of collimation just for this video but i know what kind of frustration it is to actually get these things collimated so i thought i'd better not but i'm sure you're going to get the idea here now once you've gave that collimator a quarter of a turn mark where the dot is again um so if i mark that i'll mark it there and we continue doing that. So again, another quarter of a turn. So now the target will be facing towards the floor, if you like, on your collimator, and mark the dot. Okay, and you keep doing this, and then the final quarter turn. So we've turned the collimator again, and mark the dot again. Now, once you've done that quarter turn and marked it, you'll, you'll see that you've actually drawn a square. Now, the center of that square is where the laser should be. Now, you can simply draw a, a little faint X, if you like, joining the dots, and the center of that X is where the laser should be. So you can see now we've got a baseline. We know where the laser needs to go, and we also know how far out our laser collimator is.
So now it's time to start adjusting your adjusting screws to bring that dot. Now, what I'll do is I'll just draw a fake one a little bit bigger so you can see it. This is probably what you've got, something like that. Um, in fact, if I move it, let's do it. We don't want too many squares here. We'll just cross them out. Move it there. You've probably got something like... Uh, something like this i don't know all right so you can see that that laser once you've done your quarter turn should be there bang in the middle so now we've got somewhere to guide that laser we know where to start taking it so the next step is is to bring your laser back to the target to the top now if you look at your numbers now you can do one or two things here i just simply use the numbers on um on your, your brightness you know where you turn it here where you've got your numbers on the brightness and you'll see that these uh, adjusting uh, holes usually correspond or line up with the number or near as damn it a number depending on what brightness you've setting you've got it on obviously it's going to be yours is going to be probably different uh, but you can see this top one i've got it on number four and that's just lined up with number is it four yes it is lined up with number four Keep turning it, you can see the next one's at number one, etc. So just take a note at uh, where your uh, collimation adjustment holes are onto the numbers. Another way you can do this is to use something like masking tape or painter's tape and just wrap a, a, a strip around uh, the barrel of the collimator and mark them A, B and C. Um, and then we're ready, we're ready now. So um, I like to put, like I say, in a starting position with one collimation with your target at the top. And uh, if we're at this position, like I say, we're trying to get that laser into the middle. So whatever tool you're using, um, this is just a, a two millimeter Allen screwdriver type affair. You now just want to just doing small adjustments on uh, your um, adjusting screws here. Uh, have a look, see how it moves. If it's moving away that way, try tightening it and then turn it a quarter till you get to your next one and maybe tighten that one. Yeah, so you're loosening that one and tightening that one and see where the laser's taking it. Don't worry, you can't damage it. Um, one bit of advice I would say is if you do get totally lost and uh, you just don't know where you are with it and it's just a mile out, you, you know, you're making things worse, is to put a set into these screws. Um, if you wind them fully in, okay, and then take, say, five twists back and do that on each screw. So wind it fully in, five twists back, wind it fully in, five twists back. Then you've balanced all them screws back up um, and so you're, they're in like some kind of stable form so you can start adjusting again. So, But don't panic, take your time. The thing to do as well is once you've, um, as depending on how far away you are as well, um, if your eyes are anything like mine, <laughs> any further than uh, three foot and I'm struggling. So uh, like I say, if you're quite distant and once you turn it and you can't tell, just do your calibration dot method, start that again. So put it in your jig uh, and do your quarter turns, marking your square and see if the square is actually reducing. What you're looking for is something round about a two millimeter square something like that you're not going to get it absolutely spot on so it doesn't move at all unfortunately these type of cheaper laser collimators they're just not geared up the gearing is not precise enough to get them absolutely spot on uh, you can get laser collimators that are a lot more accurate than these um, but they're a lot more money as well but like I say, don't worry if it's two or three millimeters out. If you've got a little tiny square that's, um, you know, two or three millimeters square, that's good enough. Um, and that's going to definitely be better than what it were. I hope I've made that clear enough for you folks, how to uh, get these things back into ship shape. And uh, like I said at the start of the video, there's no easy way of doing this. Apart from following these steps that I've told you, you've got to get your baseline first. Uh, by using a jig take your time be patient with it like I say you can't really break it you don't want to make sure you don't fully unwind the screws in any shape or form um, and uh, don't forget that reset if you lose the plot if you just it's all over the place remember fully tighten one in 
and then just really you know you know five full turns backwards do that on each on three on all three of the screws and that way you've got then a, a neutral position to restart your calibration again and then you just put it back in your slot remember always do your quarter turns marking it uh, then do your just in quarter turns checking it um, and just keep doing them uh, that procedure and you'll uh, soon do it it's not easy folks it's frustrating but you'll get there well that's it for another video folks thank you so much for watching if you've watched this far and if you have watched this far well you're a true dedicated supporter um, and i do appreciate your time i really do um, don't forget um, like share subscribe all the rest of it you know all that by now don't you i don't need to tell you that <laughs> well have fun collimating your collimators folks and until the next one take good care of yourselves and i'll see you on the next one bye for now